let's let's it's only a minute long. It's on there with some broad. <laughs> was some, <that>? broad. <laughs> some broad. Some broad. Bishop broad. In the case of the president, do you get a sense that his regular attendance and adherence? Wait, is that a guy? Resonate. Wait, I, wait, wait, wait. I think it is. No, no, a no, guy. The one, is that a guy? I have no idea. Here's <laughs> <laughs> well, day of visibility. Who knows? <laughs> regular attendance and adherence to the faith resonates. Do you, does it just me? Does it look like he purposefully has his pectoral cross hidden? That's interesting. That's a good maybe, point. Maybe it, not it, trying to show off his authority. I mean, it almost looks like this. it's tucked like under his left arm. It was like under yeah, his armpit. Like this is the, against the. That's, all right, go back to the beginning so people can hear the question. Go go back to the beginning so people can hear the question because okay. the question's important. The, in the case of the president, do you get a sense that his regular attendance and adherence to the faith? resonates with American Catholics? I would say that he's very sincere about his faith. But like a number of Catholics, he picks and chooses dimensions of the faith to highlight while ignoring or even contradicting other parts. There, there is a phrase that uh, we have used in the past, a cafeteria Catholic. You choose that which is attractive and dismiss that which is challenging. Or as Thomas Aquinas would say, that's you, a woman. <laughs> you allow your conscience to guide you. Right? Is there is there something on the menu he's not ordering? Love traditional Thomas is having there. Well, I, I, I would say there are things, <laughs> especially in terms of the life issues, mm -hmm. there are things that he chooses to ignore or he uses the uh, the current situation as a political pawn rather than saying, look, my church believes this. In the case of the president. So <laughs> let's actually. So that, yeah, I you're mean, right. I, I, I didn't. I'm broad. <laughs> I didn't expect Gregory to like actually admit that. Yeah, he did admit more than I thought he would, but even still, what he his what his what his solution was, well, what he should just do is say, Well, my church teaches this, but this is what I believe. He's he's going the JFK line, right? Like personally opposed, or right. you know, personally I'm against this thing, but I won't follow it out for the law. But dude, the like that's his bishop, and you're yep. talking about a, a a president who came out and on Easter Sunday said this is trans day of visibility thing like that was just a direct shot in the face of christians it's like i don't if care he's, if he's acknowledging that one of his one of the people he's ordinary of is contradicting the faith why does he not excommunicate him well he that's the thing exactly he says in the statement that there's many catholics in the u.s who pick and choose what they believe but yep. that's a horrible answer because according to the solemn teaching of the church, both in canon law as well as in magisterial pronouncements, if you willfully deny one point of the authoritative magisterium in faith and morals, you are not a Catholic. And by the even the current code of canon law, 1983, John Paul II, yep. all heretics and schismatics and apostates are automatically excommunicated, right? This is people who are willful, of course, right? People willful manifest heresy etc so he should have come out and very clearly said yeah look biden's not a catholic right most people in america who claim to be catholic aren't catholic so maybe he resonates with them this is and that could have been a good teaching moment he could have been like there's a, this thing called cafeteria catholicism which is just fake catholicism it doesn't exist but that lady tom i'm not even gonna get started with no that. please <laughs> let's, let's, let's get into it I well, hold on something. nick may i say something Go for it, bro. <laughs> think about this. He's probably going both ways, too, because you'll say most Catholics, because they'll go with the conservative and say, see, they don't believe what Pope Francis said about the death penalty. So they can pick and choose as well. He's, he's throwing it on both sides so he can cover his Who, tracks. Who's going both ways? Uh, well, the, the woman well, no, next this to is, him. This is a good point. You got to understand that Cardinal Gregory is himself a cafeteria Catholic. All right. 100%. 100%. Well, and a lot of our bishops are, right? Like there was a, a group of bishops that came out and were urging 
Wilton Gregory to excommunicate Joe Biden. I mean, yeah. you had mm -hmm. Strickland and, uh, you know, a whole bunch of them all got together and they, and even Mueller, Cardinal Mueller, who was just on with Tucker. I, I wish Tucker got um, Tucker, uh, Bishop know. Schneider instead. It's hard to understand uh, Mueller. It, it you like know, it's, accent? Yeah, it's pretty tricky Schneider's to much better. Yeah. Plus, I Mueller, think, though, the, the thing is with Mueller, like, you know, it's really sad because, like, there's a lot of good he says, but then you read a lot of his books and you see, like, you know, he kind of questions the bit, like, the reality of miracles in the New Testament, wondering not whether or not they were just symbols and things like that. And Mueller? Like, yeah, this is an he's, interesting... He's a Benedict. Yeah, yeah, Mueller. So he's a Benedict. Yeah, yeah, same as Benedict. And so you're just sitting there like, this is eerily similar to literally Pashindi Dominici Gregis by Pius X, explicitly talking about, like, modernism, one of its manifestations is... Um, the denial of miracles in the New Testament. Now, I'm not calling Cardinal Mueller a modernist. I'm just saying, yeah. clearly, if he if he's teaching this, maybe he's been influenced by it in some influenced way. Influenced by it, yeah. The problem is, like everybody has at this point, it's so <laughs> crazy. Like all of our bishops have. To be fair, Mueller probably <laughs> <Anthony's accent. laughs> uh, yeah. So, all right. So they keep bringing this point up, right? So, uh, hold on. I read that the this visibility day has been going on since 18 or 19 this year happened to fall on Easter, but for Biden to ban anything Christian, ban anything Christian wrong. So it's it's like I get that. Yeah, they chose March 31st years ago. But look, the idea that you have a Catholic president, even look, and then Governor Hochul tells every building in New York to recognize this. You see the you see you see the image of 1956 Easter Sunday where every yeah. building has a crucifix on it to celebrate Easter in our country 50 years ago, a hundred years ago, whatever, 75 years ago. And now they're lighting it up with the, the, the flag of the, you know, the rainbow thing. And you just see how far our nation has just tumbled to go. Not even just, like, they'd have been better off just not acknowledging it today. Just been like, all right, let's just not say anything, you know, like, you know, you're spitting in the face of the majority of people because still a majority of this country still does identify as Christian and they don't want to see this nonsense. But part of the reason they're doing it is to get a reaction from us. And they're going to use that reaction against us to come down and hammer down on us in the future. It's also I think election it's, season. It's election. I think it's part, part of that, Anthony. I also think part of it is that they just know that they can get away with it. And this is something that I've really started to like, I guess, recognize the evil of is that so many all the, the main line Protestant denominations, they're called like the classic, the sister sevens, right? So like yeah. the Episcopalians, Methodists, etc. All of them accept sodomy. They all accept all this. They all promote this stuff. So it's pretty much just like traditional conservative Catholics and the evangelical wing of Protestantism in the U.S. Yeah. at the moment, who's like pushing up against this stuff. But they know that they can get away with this, which I think ties back into what we're talking about, even with Lila Rose, is, is that, as I mentioned in the video that I made on this subject, this attitude of Christ did not come to set up a political kingdom, this attitude amongst Christians is exactly why this stuff is going on. Yeah. Like if we actually had a majority Catholic men's, if you will, population that, you know, actually had a backbone and was going to say no to this stuff, it wouldn't happen. Right. But we don't, that's probably most of the churches are ran by women. Most of them are more in like, focused in on some type of communal soft activity go to like your average parish catechesis lecture it's usually run by women all of the sunday schools are run by women you know shoot most of the evangelical pastors now a good chunk of them are women yeah. and so my whole point is that everything's gotten so feminized and so christian nationalism man it's the only way to go forward <laughs> in the long so yeah time. so that's been that conversation's been popping up a lot lately right christian nationalism and they're trying to say it's like a dirty word and stuff but it really is i mean if you look towards even a country like hungary which it's not even a christian nationalist country but at least you have their leaders trying to allow christianity to form their judgments and opinions and stuff like we're, we're in such bad shape now that the idea that christian nationalism would be this dirty word like because people think it's like theocracy we're looking for to be like the christian taliban or something no it's that we want our we we want something more akin to what was going on in medieval europe where well, you just uh, we just have to recognize that that has nothing to do with nationalism and the problem of christian nationalism is the nationalism part the church has historically been opposed to a to nationalism yeah 
Yeah, it would be more like orthodoxy. What? Like orthodoxy is a nationalist thing, right? So like the, the different orthodox yeah. churches are very intertwined with their with their governments. And so, you know, the Russian Orthodox and the Greek Orthodox, like they, they're very, it's very nationalistic where, where the church is supposed to be universal and it's not mm -hmm. supposed to be very right. nationalistic within a thing. But regardless, it's a that's not our situation. It, yeah, but it the idea would be more just that the the Christian conscience should it, it should shape every it's really we do integralism is, yeah, is yeah. really what we're looking for it's just that christ's teaching and his laws would be instilled and respected in public social policy that's just what it is and so it's just like i mean a recognition sure. of christ the king yeah exactly it's like okay yeah well, everyone agrees that you shouldn't go out and murder an adult i use that key phrase adult right because <laughs> we seem to debate <laughs> If you're not born um right. so we all agree on that but see this is the thing if you don't believe in god if you don't believe that there is an objective truth then why would you say that you can say well tranquility and human flourishing etc cetera, etc cetera, but there's not an objective real root that you can point back to the same thing is with all of these though the same god who said thou shall not murder also said thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind right don't kill your children right he, he talks about husbands honoring their wives wives submitting to their husbands etc all of this stuff works together. All this oh, that's comes... great. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. You guys should actually have uh, this guy on your show, and you guys should you should specifically Josiah's look up uh, or Sean. Well, not not. <laughs> well, you could have both. I don't care. Uh, I would just <laughs> I just want to see what Sean looks like after him having that thumbnail for forever. But I'm actually thinking you guys should have um specifically Father Thomas Crean on your guys' show. He is a British Thomist, uh, Dominican Th 